It sounds like a story straight from a Star Trek movie, to tell you the truth. St. John looks up in vision to heaven and he sees somewhere off in outer space what? Well, we've got Pastor Neil Thompson with us. <laughs> what does he see? Well, yeah, really interesting. I mean, we're yeah. into chapter 5 of Revelation yeah. this week. And uh, in chapter 5, it mm. starts out this way, you know, and in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, so in the okay. right hand of God himself, yeah. there's this scroll that's been sealed with seven seals, yeah. and then a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals? Mm. And then, you know, you can almost see the, 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 this tension mounting in heaven as, as it goes out. Well, who is? Who is? Are, are you? Are you? Are you? Yeah. And no one was found. And then John starts to cry and to weep. And eventually, one of the elders said to him, because this is all part of the drama, well, yeah. don't weep, don't cry, because here's the answer in verse 5. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Mm. But then what does that mean? Yeah. Well, that's why we went back to Ezekiel. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, in Ezekiel, he goes and sees a flying scroll, doesn't he? Right. Yes, yeah, yeah. indeed. And it contained the list of the sins of God's people. Mm -hmm. And it was unfortunately written on both sides. Yeah, so no, no hiding it. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. And it contained the law of God and the things that they'd done wrong. Yeah, so it was yeah. all there. And so yeah. this scroll then gets yeah. un unraveled. So, yeah. so who's, what's on the scroll? Well, the, 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 the scroll actually is a record of all of that. Mm -hmm. So all of what you like, the kind of things that you were just saying. Yeah. And the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, well, who yeah. is that? That's obviously referring to Christ. Okay. So he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the root of David. And this is a picture, isn't it? It is. It's a, well, like so much of what we see in Revelation, it's, it's just symbolic language trying to unlock for us and give us great clues to who the real person is. And this is, yeah. this is referring to Jesus. I'm just thinking about it now. Wouldn't it be wonderful? I go home and my wife says to her neighbours across the fence while gossiping about me, ha, ah, my husband, the lion. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That Probably might be not. A nice dream. That might be a nice dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it might not happen I'll anytime soon. have to start pumping soon. iron, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to pump a lot of iron, I would yeah. think. So what qualified Jesus to be called Lion of the Tribe of Judah? Well, his yeah. creatorship was one. Okay. But uh, also that he was actually a member of that tribe. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And that he, and a lion is like a kingly animal as well. So here is like the ultimate, the root of David, mm -hmm. the, the, the stump that would come up from David's lineage as mm -hmm. king. Christ comes from all of that mm -hmm. and he comes as king. Actually, yeah, this takes us back to where Kyle was going before. Because uh, King David's descendant, the Old Testament prophecies said that uh, the Messiah to come had to be a descendant of King David and the right to rule. Is that right? That's right, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. Yeah. You know, the Bible said quite clearly, and the Jewish people mm. believed that their hero was going to be a, a, of, of a specific line of the Jewish people. Yeah. And, and Jesus fulfilled that perfectly. And when, the, uh, when, the, when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, that uh, line of Jewish kings basically got destroyed along with the city. That's yep. right. So it's interesting. The Messiah came along at the right time. Well, exactly the records on were time. Destroyed. Yeah, exactly on time <laughs> okay, as it okay. happens. Yeah, so it's the line of the tribe of Judah. Yes. The root. The root of David. Okay, explain this to me. How is your son your root? Um, because or he... you don't say that about humans, do you? Because can I be the root of my father? Um, well, yeah, uh, in, in the sense maybe that, you know, you've been passed on. No, so, look, I'm the butt of my father. If you're thinking about a tree... Oh, OK, all yeah, right. Yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, yeah. OK, so, root. Oh, just thinking, well, you know, the root begins the tree, doesn't it? Yes. So if he's the root of David, maybe he's the one before David. So he's the one who starts Is it Is that drawing too long a bow? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Except when we draw family trees, we start with the extended family up the top and work yeah, yeah, downwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the root of David, if I get you so right... So he came from before David. So he comes from before David, before mm. David was even a king and born. Mm. Here is the picture of Christ being the very source of all of that. Okay, he's the source of life. Yep. Okay, and yet he visited Earth as King David's great, 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 great grandson. Correct. Okay, got that out. Okay, so right. let's progress through it. Digging out of a hole there, but yeah, you've yeah, done yeah, right. Okay, okay thanks, so there's a song happening, isn't there? There is. Yeah, okay. And there's a there's a glorious scene taking place mm -hmm. here in front of the throne room. Yeah, we better get Kyle to read that song. And this yeah. is verse 9. Verse 9? Yep. My version here says, And they sang a new song with these words. You are worthy to take the scroll. I'm not going to sing it, by the way. Because That's okay. Yep. You are worthy to take the scroll the and break its seals and open yeah. My singing's horrible. Yeah. Seals and open it. Okay. For you were killed and your blood has ransomed people for God from every okay. tribe and language and people and nation. And you have caused them to become God's kingdom and his priests. Mm -hmm. And they will reign on the earth. Yeah. 
Ah, so this is uh, one key why Jesus Christ is qualified to be the superhero for the planet. And that is that he came to the planet Earth in order to die and do what? And to be brought back to life and to forgive those of us who have sinned, which is everybody. Well, I kind of like the word that was in yours, redeem or ransom, mm. um, which is kind of like um, taking a place and paying mm. a price. Like, you know, if there was someone held as hostage in a faraway country, Christ would come and redeem them from that. Mm. Well, you know, guys, we're living on a fallen world. Nothing's perfect in this world. I've just got a cough. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, but it's interesting yeah, yeah. here, while, whilst we talk about King Arthur, you know, possibly saving uh, the, the English, at least for a short yeah, period yeah, of yeah. time from the, from, the, from the Saxons, you know, here it says that, that God, was, that Jesus was a ransom, ransomed people for God from every tribe, language, people and nation. You know, this is more than just Robbie Dean saving the Wallabies. Okay. You know, this, is, this, is, this has got to be the most powerful superhero of all time, because he, he cares about everybody no matter whether you're from New Zealand, whether you're from Australia, this is, this whether you're from, from the middle of nowhere. This is more than Mother Teresa mm. showing love to people with leprosy in India. Absolutely. Because she never claimed to have the power to bring them back from death. Mm. Correct. Okay. So this is big. This is, this is, this is as big okay. as it gets. And this is the big claim of Jesus Christ in Revelation 5. And in actual fact, the central claim of Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go to other tombs around the world and you will mm -hmm. see the, 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 the tomb mm -hmm. of the prophet but you won't find a tomb of Christ. You'll, all you'll find is an empty tomb of Christ. Okay. That's what Christians say, because he, he died, he was resurrected, mm -hmm. and because he was resurrected, he has the right mm -hmm. to, to actually redeem people. Yeah, well, just uh, in summary then, last week we looked at Revelation chapter 4, and what we discovered there was that the claim of Jesus Christ in the universe was that he created all things, and for his pleasure they were and they are created. That was the song being sung in chapter 4. And in chapter 5 today, we find Jesus Christ is qualified, although he's supreme God and magnificent creator, to be the one who can be trusted with the story of your life, whether good or bad, or whether you're going through hardship or whether life's going well. Because he alone knows what it's like to be able to take your story. He can read it. And that's about it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. hey. It's a powerful story. It is. It's a powerful yeah. story. And, and I guess this is a prelude yeah. to what's coming next. You know, if we're going yeah. to drop a little teaser in there, this would be a prelude to, yeah. you know, the undoing of those seals and taking us all there. Yeah. And if you've got big questions and you're wondering about your place with God and how does it all work out, just have faith because God sends his love.